Hello and welcome to Save by the Bell Boxing. Neither right, neither left, neither jab, neither cross. Coming to you like a Larry Holmes jab coming straight down the pipe. Anyway, last night we had uh, Josh Warrington defending his IBF title against Sophia Takusht. Um, so, what did we really learn from this fight? Now, Josh Warrington seems to be coming into his own now as a world champion. He really believes that he is one of the best in the world. Um, he's very straightforward. I mean, he is, what he does do, he does very well. He does very good straightforwards. He's nice and tight in his, in his defence. Very aggressive, very come forward and very effective in what he does. Now, people would look at his last performance and think, really, is he that good? Did he really show enough to be an elite world champion? Well, that was possibly a fight he didn't really want to take. It's probably a fight that he wasn't really up for. But it seems he was really up for last night. He had to really make a statement. And that's exactly what he did. He made a statement. He put that guy out of there. Constant pressure. And you could see from pretty much the first round. His opponent didn't want any of it. He didn't want to be in there. I mean, he, to be fair, he got knocked down a few times in the second round. And he came back and he seemed like he wanted the fight. But you could see the fear in his eyes. He knew he was beaten. And from the first bell, well, from the first minute of the first round, you could kind of tell there was only, this fight was only going one way. Josh Warrington wanted it. And when he's with his home crowd, he's very, very dangerous. He has a very nasty streak. He comes across as a very nice guy. Uh, very down to earth, but you could see he's got a nasty streak in him. Technically, as I said, what he does, he does really well. He puts that jab out there. He puts that cross out there. He keeps tight. He moves in. He moves out. He keeps on his toes. And he's always going to cause problems for pretty much every fighter in his division out there because he is so aggressive and he likes to bring the fight to you. Maybe a more technical boxer might be able to work him out quite easily, but we will see. But ever since beating Frampton, he seems to have grown into the role as a world champion, as I said. When he got into that ring last night, you could kind of tell that he looked at this opponent and thought, you don't deserve to be in the ring with me. You should not be in the ring with me. And... And that's the sort of performance he put out there. That's what he wanted to show people. I think he just wanted to get him out. But he had to make a statement. And he had to show that he was the worthy um, world champion. And that he was on elite level. And he was much, much above this guy's level. And that guy was purely out of his depth. But... He did what he asked to do. He got him out there quick. He got him out there decisively. And he made mincemeat at that man. And then that was the end of that. And now we can only look to see where Josh Warrington is going to go. Now, will Josh Warrington always think, will he emulate this Ricky Hatton kind of uh, status where he will travel with with lots of fans, as we know, he's a big Leeds United fan, and he's got people people around him, and people that love him, and people that come out to watch him, and I think, possibly, if he gets to the elite levels, hot, well, the Santa Cruz's of the world, he could travel and take a lot of fans with him, because he's a big fan favourite, especially in his hometown of Leeds, and I think there's a, for me, I, I get more and more impressed with him, the more I watch him, to be honest, even though we know against Keith Galahad, it were he weren't at his best, but I think there's possibly he didn't really fancy that fight. He kind of it was hard for him to get out of bed for that fight because he didn't really want to give him the shot. There was a lot of need all there. I think this fight he came to the ring believing I am the world champion. You do not deserve to be in this ring with me, and I will finish you. And and that's exactly what he did. So it was a good performance by Josh Warrington and well deserved that he now moves on and trying to unify divisions and trying to. Gary Russell Jr., Santa Cruz, and try and take these big elite fights because that's what he's desperate for. That's what he wants. But they needed to get rid of mandatories, etc., etc. And that Kid Galahad is going to be fighting for the mandatory spot against him again, which is kind of crazy. But these things happen in boxing. Boxing is a crazy world. Also, we saw the heavyweight debut of Usyk against Witherspoon. Now, a lot of people might look at this fight and say, well, Usyk, 
it was not impressive. Uh, you know, he should have demolished this guy. This guy was out of shape. You know, he should have got rid of him within a few rounds. But the thing about Yusik is, technically, we know he's very good. Now, he's come up the way. Obviously, it kind of looks that his punches aren't as quick, aren't as sharp at this weight. Um, he doesn't seem to hold the any the power possibly, but he did mention in in his interview afterwards that you know he he himself understands that he needs to start you know getting used to the weight and used to the power and needs to be more effective. Yusik is a very confident man in the sense that a lot of fighters when they're expected to do things, especially British fighters, American fighters. Not so much Eastern Europeans, but when they're expecting to do things, they put pressure on themselves and they go out there to try and blast someone away. And, and, and they put their own pressure on their own shoulders because what's expected of the crowd or, or other people is that you should demolish this guy. But Yusik doesn't worry about that. He doesn't care. As long as he wins, he doesn't care. He's not going to be rushed by anyone. And you can kind of see, and I've said about Yusik in the past, when he fought Bellew, for instance, he'll take four or five rounds just to work you out, just to just to see where your openings are, where your gaps are, and then he'll start to put his work in from the fifth round onwards. And he kind of did the same thing. It was a little easier to work out what, what his opponent was going to do, but he still does the same. He takes his time. He was in no trouble at any point in that fight. And it kind of almost seemed he wanted to do the rounds. He wanted to test them over 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 12 rounds because he's been out of the ring for like a year now. So obviously he wanted to... And, and it takes a special fighter to go in a fight and say, I'm happy to do the 12 rounds. Because at one point he had Weatherspoon in trouble in the corner and he just backed off. And the commentators were saying, what what is he doing? Why, why is he doing that? And I think he's doing it because he's got time. He's, he he, he kind of knew that at any point I can get rid of you. Because if he puts on the pressure, bam, 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 puts combinations together, the referee's going to jump in and say, whoa, that's enough. Hold up, hold up, that's enough. And I think he knew he could do that all the time. He was going forward well. He was using his jab well, his cross well. But he wasn't really putting in the pressure. And then when he started to put the pressure on and put the combinations together and started to feel a bit more... Um, at home, I guess, and just kind of moving, using the ring a lot, going round the ring, popping him off, and tiring out his opponent. And then he kind of thought, right, I'm going to finish it now. And this is and this is what he did. But for me, um, you can tell by his interview afterwards, he's not kind of worried. He's not thinking, oh my god, it took me out. He, he doesn't he doesn't bow to pressure around him, which is quite um, quite noble in in nowadays boxing because so many fighters do. They don't. You know, bow to the they bow to the pressure and they try and get someone out quickly, and that usually that usually means um, that usually means they'll make mistakes during a fight. He doesn't do that. He he didn't make any mistakes. He was he was having fun in there. He was enjoying himself. He was getting used to the weight. He was getting used to fighting a bigger guy. He was getting used to 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 the rounds again because he's been out for a year. So I don't think there's really much to worry about. If anyone says, well, you know, he's obviously if he can't beat him or he can't get rid of him within a couple of rounds, then he's going to be no good. No, 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 no. Do not write him off. He's a work in progress at heavyweight. And remembering, as I said, he'd been out of the ring for a year. He's jumping up a weight, carrying a bit more weight. And he's kind of got to get used to it and how to work his punches and how to be and, and how to use the power and the technique at the same time. So I don't think it's anything to worry about. And I think if anyone says that, you know, he's, he's not going to do anything in the heavyweight division, well, they're completely wrong. To be honest, I don't really know what people are saying because I haven't really checked out Twitter, I kind of avoided it because I wanted to make my own judgment, and my own my own point of view for this for this video. So for me, no, there's nothing to worry about. I know he did mention that he'd want Joshua Ruiz, the winner of Joshua Ruiz, and he is um, he is mandated to to fight for the title. Whoever wins out of that, um, after going what I just said. I don't know whether he should jump straight in with, with, with Joshua or Ruiz. He says he'd prefer to have Joshua, um, which I can understand why, because he would be naturally the quicker guy compared to Ruiz, who is very quick at that weight and used to being quick at that weight. 
Um, but I would like to see him have another fight, have another test, another big guy, just to get used to it, work his way into it, you know, because we know he's got the skills to be a world champion, I personally think. But it's how he transitions from cruiser into heavyweight. And it's not as simple as just going, boom, right, I'm going to, you know, in the past, I know people have done it. But even, you know, you, it's very it's very rare you'll go straight from cruiserweight champion, straight pretty much into a heavyweight championship fight. You know, I think you need two or three fights to work your way into it. And it was a change of opponent and things like that. So, you know, there's, when we see Usyk, there's a contrast with what I said about Josh Warrington earlier on. Josh Warrington felt the pressure, knew he wanted to get him out early and blah, 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 blah. Whereas Usyk, you don't feel that pressure. He does what he wants to do in the ring. He knows what he can do. He doesn't care if you're going to say, yeah, you're shit, or you can't get rid of Chaz Weatherspoon within X amount of rounds. He don't care. He's on his own path, and he's working the way he needs to work and the way he wants to work. So for me, I think it was, I think it was, it was a decent outing. Do you know what I mean? You got to see Usyk at heavyweight, and, and he will only get better. Definitely will only get better. But whether he's ready for, for Wilder or a Joshua yet... They're, they're the elite of the division, so I think he needs a bit of time. I would give him a couple more fights. And he may say, you know, I want Joshua next. But Eddie Hearn is going to be thinking, now. we need to build him a bit more. We need to build the profile a bit more. We need to get him in with a couple of heavyweights. And I'm sure Eddie Hearn has got a list of heavyweights that he'd want to put Usyk in before he got into that title fight. So for me, I would like to see him take a few more fights but nevertheless he's finally made his debut and hopefully they'll get him out quickly and he didn't take too much damage he was very much in control of that fight and 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 there was things to be taken from that fight which are very interesting but I don't think let's not jump off the UC bandwagon just yet well I'm not going to anyway anyway that was just two fights there were many more this weekend I'll try and pick up on them Tomorrow, get a video out tomorrow or Tuesday about the rest of the weekend's action. But nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed the video. Click like, love, subscribe. Check me out on a Wednesday. We're going live this week on the Boxing Talk podcast. The subscription will be down below. Check it out, subscribe, and you'll see us talk about the weekend's events anyway. And I'll probably just repeat what I've already said and add a little bit more comedy. Anyway, thanks for showing up and uh, be careful out there. Music's coming for you.